Hello friends, and today I'm back up the Antrim Coast Road, beginning in the hills overlooking Glen Arm, stopping off at the picturesque harbour in Carnlaw, dropping in on the beach at Waterfoot, before climbing up to Red Bay Castle and finally ending up on the shore just beyond the Red Arch. Forgive me for having shown all this before, but I haven't really been to too many other places. Although now I have plans to be up to the north coast before too long, now that restrictions have eased. But in any case, it's a landscape I never tire of. The sea on the one side, while on the other, majestic headlands tower high above us. Massive rocks that seem as old as time itself. Here are a few pictures of the Giants Causeway I took some years back. These hexonical structures are said to have been formed about 60 million years ago. That's what scientists tell us. I don't know because I don't know the age of rocks. But rocks are incredible things. So solid and firm and strong. And the Bible tells us that God is our rock. The psalmist says, God only is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. He says, God is my rock. The one in whom I take refuge. There are nearly 60 verses in the Bible that use the metaphor of a rock in referring to God. But now I want to talk about something which is the complete opposite. Grass. Let me read about it from Isaiah 40. We've been looking at the chapter over the past couple of weeks and we are down to verse 6. It begins, A voice says cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass and its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. In a hot eastern climate, grass of all things was extremely fickle and fleeting. Green pastures were never a permanent feature of the landscape. But they would only last as long as the rains fell, and then they would disappear. Sometimes plants, particularly weeds, they would spring up quickly, only to be scorched by the noonday sun and die. Grass is therefore a fitting symbol of the transitionariness of human life. And Isaiah reminds us in verse 7 that the people are grass. In contrast to our God, who is likened to a rock, steady, sure and steadfast. Yes, even the mighty rocks can crack or slip, possibly as a result of frost action. They can become unstable and dislodge as the result of prolonged rainfall or sudden earth movement. Indeed, on the Antrim coast where I am today, there is evidence of a massive landslide when hundreds of tons of rock have come sliding down the mountainside. So even the mighty rocks are not invincible. But Isaiah does tell us, when all else fails, the word of our God will stand forever. It is everlasting. It is dependable. It is secure. And it will never fail. Last week we were looking at the verse, prepare the way of the Lord. And we must prepare a way for the Lord in our hearts. To begin with, we have to acknowledge that we are finite human beings. Our life is fickle and our time on this earth is short. We need a power greater than our own, a rock to depend on, something that gives life purpose and meaning and something to aim for, 
something that goes beyond what this world can offer. A home in heaven and life everlasting. And you know, God's word gives us all we need to satisfy the desire of the human heart and bring us the assurance of that eternal home, the place where God is. And you know, if our hope is set on the perishable nature of life, where Isaiah says, its beauty is short-lived and it will fade and wither away, then we're going to be very disappointed and there'll be no comfort at the end of the day. But this whole chapter, Isaiah 40, it is one of comfort. It begins, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. That's Isaiah 40, verse 1. God's comfort comes to those whose iniquity is pardoned and whose hope is in the true God, the rock of our salvation. There's a very important verse. It's found in Psalm 90, verse 12. And it says, Teach us to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom. That verse surely reminds us of our limitations as finite human beings. And it reminds us that we need to be wise. To be wise is not to put one's trust in something that we know will let us down in the end, but rather in the one who is the great creator, the everlasting father, the eternal God, the one who loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's all for now, friends. See you again next week. And thank you for your company as we stop off here in the hills above Glenarm. Bye. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you to worship you, the one who is our strength, our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer, the one in whom we take refuge, our shield, the horn of our salvation, and our stronghold. 
the unchanging one, the God who is, who was, and who ever shall be. Jesus Christ, the one in whom we trust, and who is the same yesterday, today and forever. Lord, in the light of your presence, in the light of your word, and in the light of eternity, we recognise our own frailty and our dependence on you. And like the psalmist we say, Who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? Forgive us, Lord, when we stray, when we forget, and when we neglect. When we neglect the important things of eternity and stray from your ways and forget your word and your goodness. But rather, may we be watchful, alert and obedient for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. In whose name we ask it. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.